What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to build a neural network that recognizes handwritten digits in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now I have a video on this channel already about a handwritten digit recognition in Python. It is part of one of my first tutorial series about machine learning, but the video is quite old, the quality is not good, so I wanted to make a modern rework of this video because I think the video topic is quite interesting, and especially for those of you who are into machine learning and you'll learn the basics and you wanna start with neural networks and you wanna have a simple project, this video is kind of uh, a good beginner project when it comes to working with neural networks. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to load the so-called MNIST dataset from TensorFlow Keras, which is just a dataset with a bunch of handwritten digits in the 28 times 28 pixel format. So you just have some handwritten digits and uh, the respective labels. So if there is a two, you also have the label two. And if it's a three, you have the label three as well. And we're going to use that as training data for our neural network. So we're going to train a neural network with that data set. Then we're going to test it. And then in the end, we're going to provide our own images. We're going to take paint or any other tool. We're going to do some handwritten digits. You can also, if you want, scan them uh, like actual handwritten digits and scan them into the computer and then, you know, scale them down. Uh, but in the end, we're going to predict our own digits using the neural network. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install a bunch of libraries. For this, we're going to open up CMD, the command line in Windows, or if you're on Linux, of course, or Mac, you can just open up your terminal. And we type pip install, and we're going to need numpy first. Um, I'm not going to install them because I already have all these tools. We're going to need numpy. We're going to need opencv-python, like that, opencv-python. We're going to need matplotlib. And we're going to need, what was the last one? TensorFlow, obviously. TensorFlow, like that. Those are the four libraries we're going to need. NumPy, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, and OpenCV Python. Um, and we're going to start by importing um, CV2, which is OpenCV Python. That's the way we import it. We're going to also import NumPy as NP. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And we're going to import um, TensorFlow STF. And later on, we're going to also need the OS module. So let's import it right in the beginning, import OS. By the way, let me just reposition my camera because I think I didn't do that. There you go. Um, so those are the libraries that we're going to need. Now Matplotlib is going to be just used for visualization of the actual digits. So actually that's optional, you don't need that. NumPy is important for just working with uh, NumPy arrays. CV2 is about uh, computer vision. So CV stands for computer vision. We're going to need that to, uh, to load images and process images. And TensorFlow is what we're actually going to use for the machine learning part. So let's get started by loading the data set. We're going to say MNIST equals, in order to get the data set, we can just use tf.keras.datasets.mnist. By doing that, we can just load it directly from TensorFlow. We don't need to download CSV files and process them. We just have it already in the module. And then we're going to split that into training data and testing data. For those of you who are completely new to machine learning, you don't have a lot of experience. What you usually do when you train a model is you get the data that you have. You have all the labeled data with all these digits and the classification. So labeled data means we already know what the digits are. We don't need to, to guess, we don't need to, to assess them, we already have the labels. And what we do with that data is we split it up into training data and testing data. The training data is what we actually use to train the model and the testing data, which is still labeled, uh, this is the data that we use in order to assess the model. So we see, okay, how well does it perform on data that it has never seen before? Um, that is the idea of testing and training. And usually we go for an 80-20 split, but in this case, we can just use the load data function of the MNIST data set and it's already split up into training data and testing data. And because of that, we're going to say X train and Y train, X being the uh, pixel data and Y being the classification. So uh, the X data is the image itself, the handwritten digit itself, and Y data is just the classification. So the number, the digit. Um, and then we have a tuple with X test and Y test. And this is going to be MNIST.loadData. So we call the load data function and this is going to return two tuples 
uh, with training and testing data. All right, so now as a next step, we're going to normalize it. Normalizing basically just means scaling it down so that every value is between zero and one. So basically, if you have a pixel, uh, let's say grayscale pixel can have a lightness from zero to 255 if we ignore the RGB values. Uh, and if you normalize it, you're just going to scale down everything between zero and one. So uh, instead of, I don't know, uh, if, you, if you go for the half, like 125, a little bit more, you're not going to have 125 or a little bit more, you're going to have something around 0 0.5. So basically just scaling everything down. In order to do that, we are going to say X train is going to be tf.keras.utils.normalize and we're going to normalize the training data itself and we have to provide axis equals one. And we're going to do the same with the training uh, or actually with the testing data because we don't want to actually normalize uh, the digits, we only want to normalize the pixels because that makes it easier for a neural network to do the calculations. So x test equals tf dot keras utils normalize x test and axis is one. There you go. So that's all the pre processing we now have to uh, we now can start working on the neural network. And for this, we're going to create the model itself, we're going to say, uh, say the neural network model is going to be tf dot keras dot models and then sequential, which is just the basic model, basic sequential neural network. Um, and by the way, we're not going to talk too much about any theory here when it comes to like activation functions or optimizers or loss functions and uh, layer types, we're just going to build it and we're going to use it. Um, if you want to see more theoretical content on neural networks, let me know in the comment section down below, then I'm going to make more theory related content. But I also have a uh, theoretical video on explaining neural networks, so uh, you can just find it on my channel. So what we do now to add some layers to this model is we say model dot add. And when we say model dot add, we need to add a layer. So we can say tf dot keras dot layers. And now we can choose a layer and we're going to start out with a flattened layer. And a flattened layer basically means that we flatten a certain input shape. So let's say we have the input shape um, 28 times 28, because we have 28 pixels times 28 pixels. And what the flattened layer does is it, pro, uh, it, it turns them into one flat layer. So it's not a grid of 28 by 28. It turns them into 28 times 28, but in one thing. So basically, it says uh, 28 times 28, it turns it into one big line of 784 pixels instead of having this grid. So this is what a flattened layer does. Um, then after this flattened layer, we want to have a dense layer and a dense layer is the most basic layer that you can have. It's just a basic neural network layer that is connected uh, or where each neuron is connected to each other neuron of the other layers. So basically, we just say Keras layers dense, the most basic layer, we just have to specify how many units, let's say 128. And then we have to specify an activation function. Now you can do that in different ways, you can say activation equals tf dot nn and then choose the activation function if you want to. Or you can just provide a string with the activation function. So for example, relu is what we're going to use rectify linear unit, uh, very basic thing. It's basically just um, zero if you're negative, and then it just goes straight up linearly. Uh, you can you can Google it and you can watch my video. I think it's not too complicated. Um, then we're going to have one more of those layers, the exact same layer. And in the end, we're going to have another dense layer, but this one is going to have 10 units, because this is going to be our output layer. And we want these 10 units to represent the individual digits. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 10 neurons. Uh, and the activation function is not going to be relo, the activation function is going to be softmax. And softmax is basically what softmax does is it makes sure that all the outputs, all the 10 neurons add up to one. So you can interpret it, uh, you can interpret this as a confidence. So in the end, each neuron is going to have each of those 10 digit neurons is going to have some value between zero and one, and it signals how likely uh, the image is this digit. So for example, if we have an obvious two, we're going to see something like 0 0.95 uh, at the third neuron, because zero, one, two, three, um, and we're going to see low confidence on all the other neurons. So softmax gives us the probability for each digit to be the right answer. 
Um, after that, we compile the model. So we say model dot compile and we choose an optimizer. We choose Adam as an optimizer. We choose a loss function. We're going to go with uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. So loss equals sparse categorical cross entropy. And the metrics that we're interested in are going to be the accuracy or is going to be the accuracy. All right, so once the model is compiled, we need to fit the model. So basically train the model. And we do that by calling the fit function and passing the training data. So x train and y train. And once this step is done, we have a uh, fully working model. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to run this step. But after that, once the model is trained, we're going to save it. So we're going to say model .save, and we're going to call it I don't know, handwritten dot model, whatever. So we can run this script now see if we make any mistakes. And if we don't have any mistakes, this should um, just train. Actually, did I provide no, I need to provide epochs because epochs is basically how many iterations we're going to see how many times is the model going to see the same data all over again. So we're going to say epoch, uh, epochs equals three. This should be enough for this task. By the way, this is a little bit overkill because the handwritten digit recognition can also be done with a support vector machine, maybe even with some classification like k, uh, k nearest neighbors. Uh, you don't really need a neural network to accomplish this task. But I, I think it's a good beginner project. Um, you can also use I don't know, convolutional neural networks to make it even more professional, but it's a little bit over the top. So as you can see, now it started training, you can see epoch one out of three. And it's quite fast. But in the end, it's just gonna train and we're not going to do anything with it because we're just fitting them all and saving the model. But instead of fitting the model all over again, every time we run this program, now it's going to terminate in a second here. Um, there you go. So now instead of running all this all over again, we're just going to to comment this out. And we're just going to load the model that we just saved. So we're going to say, uh, what was it, I think model equals TF Keras dot models dot load model, there you go and we specify handwritten dot model. So it's the same as just running this code and proceeding with model. But instead of training it every time you can just load it like that because we have saved it now. Uh, I think there you go. There's the model. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is want to evaluate the model. So we want to see okay, how well does this model perform on the train uh, on the testing data. And for this, of course, we need to uh, uncommon that because here we have the test data. And we can just say model dot or actually we need return values so loss and accuracy equals model dot evaluate x test and y test. And then we can print loss and we can print accuracy. There you go. Let's run this. And this is uh, always the code that TensorFlow needs to run before it starts the actual script. So it takes some time. But these metrics basically tell us how accurate our model is, we want to have a low loss and a high accuracy. Uh, as you can see here, the loss is pretty low 0.09. And the accuracy is like 97%. That's quite good. Um, so the loss function is just some absolute value that you want to get as low as possible. And the accuracy is a number between zero and one and one would mean 100% accuracy, we don't fail anything. In this case, it means that 3% close to 3% were classified incorrectly. So the model is not perfect, but which model is perfect? No model is actually perfect most of the time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have some handwritten digits that we're going to craft ourselves in paint, we're going to draw them ourselves and paint or you can scan them in. And then we're going to feed them into the model to predict what we have drawn or what we have written on paper or in paint. So for this next step, I'm going to use paint, I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to go to resize up here, you can use whatever tool you want. As I said, you can also scan it in and just scale it down. I'm going to go to pixels up here and I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. And then I'm going to say 28 times 28 pixels. I'm going to pick a basic pencil up here, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to pick the finest size. 
um, of the pencil and then you know you can just write some handwritten digits a three for example a five whatever and you want to save those in a directory you want to have a bunch of samples that you want to classify uh, and for this video I have prepared uh, this digits directory here where I have some some uh, paint images that I did like that so digit one for example digit two digit three digit four digit five so those are the images that I'm going to classify uh, using the neural network so I have a digits directory and the digit files with uh, the pattern digit and a number after that uh, so we can iterate through the files so what we're going to do first is we're going to get rid of that and we're going to comment out this here again and then we're going to say uh, we're going to try to read all these digit files so we need to know how they're uh, what, what the name is in this case digit and a number so we're going to start with a number image number equals one and then we're going to say while os dot path dot is file so while there is a file at the following path and it's going to be digits slash digit image number dot png while there is a file like that, we're going to try to get that file into the script by saying image equals cv2.imread. And we're going to specify the same path again. So digit, digits, image number dot png. We're going to read that file. However, we're not interested in colors in this particular video. We're not classifying complex images. We only want to... Um, we only care about the form of the number about the shape we don't care about the color so we're just going to get uh, the last channel so everything and zero in the end uh, or the first channel actually sorry uh, then we're going to take that and invert it because by default it has like it is like white on black and not black on white so we want to go with image equals cb2 dot uh, or actually no, it was image equals np dot invert, and we pass the image. So we basically just invert the image, and we can actually add another step in here. We can already make it to an array. So make this an array. This is the shape that we need to pass to the neural network. So we want to have the image itself in a list as a NumPy array, and want to invert that because by default it's not in the right. Uh, it doesn't have the right orientation you could say uh, and then we're going to predict it so we're going to say prediction equals model dot predict model dot predict uh, the actual image and as I said the result is not going to be a number it's not going to give us a digit it's going to give us the activation for all the digit neurons so what we want to do is want to say print the number is or this digit is probably a and then we want to pass here we need to make this an f string first uh, we're going to say np dot arcmax prediction what does np arcmax do it's basically giving us the index of the field that has the highest number so basically it gives us which neuron has the highest activation and in our case, the zeroth neuron is representing the number zero. The first is representing the number for, uh, number one. So we don't have any problems here. We don't need to do any formatting. We can just print the arcmax itself. And then we can also show the actual image. Uh, image. So plt im show. And we can show image zero. And the cmap is just going to be binary. So plt cm binary like that and plt show now if that fails it is probably failing because uh, the resolution is not the right resolution uh, but we cannot know for sure so we're just going to handle the exception that if it doesn't work we're just gonna print error it doesn't matter too much for this particular video and finally no matter what we're going to increase the image number so that we have a progression there you go. So that should be it. We should be able to run the script and see the predictions for the digit files. Let's see. It's going to take some time, but we don't have to train the model at least. And we get error, error, error. Why do we get error? I have a problem probably somewhere. 
let's troubleshoot real quick. We have the MP array image model predict image this digit. Let's just not catch the exception for a second and see what happens. Because then we probably get some information at least. Let's run this again. Oh, I see the error already. It is digits slash digit and then the number. Because I check if this file exists, and then I load another file. So this should be fixed. Now. Uh, let's just get back to where we were. And just change this here. It should now work. There you go. This digit is probably a three. So let's close this. This digit is probably a seven. That's also correct. This digit is probably seven. Also correct. Eight. Also correct. Five. Also correct. Nine is not correct. So this is the first misclassification. Um, if the model doesn't perform well, you can of course try to train it with more epochs. Uh, because I also also had a test run where this was classified as a zero correctly. Um, then we have a one. This is correct. We have another one. This is correct. And we have a two. This is correct. We have four. This is correct. Another four. This is correct. And another four. This is correct. Okay, so we had one misclassification. So we had an accuracy of one divided by uh, or actually 11 divided by 12. So what would that be? 11 divided by 12 is 91% accuracy. Pretty good, actually, but it, we can do better, first of all, by training with more epochs, more training data. And of course, we can also uh, restructure the neural network. If we want to go overkill, we can also go with convolutional neural networks and max pooling layers, and I don't know what, uh, but that's not necessary for now. So this is how you recognize handwritten digits using neural networks in Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.